I'm Steph. And I'm Jeff. Each week, we review a film that's streaming online. As writers, we'll deep dive into the characters and plot to tell you if it's a good story. Listen at your own risk. This review contains spoilers. Now sit back. Relax. And and enjoy enjoy Stream On. Today, we'll be reviewing the Andromeda Strain, streaming on Tubi. A space probe returns to Earth carrying a lethal microbe, Andromeda. An underground base, a group of scientists race against time to find a way to counteract the constantly mutating organism. Oh, and there's a nuke under the base that's going to go off because of last act drama reason. The Andromeda Strain was directed by Robert Wise and written by Nelson Gidding. It's based on a Michael Crichton novel by the same name. It's a science fiction techno thriller from 1971 and stars Arthur Hill as Dr. Jeremy Stone, a Nobel Prize winning scientist and lead of the Wildfire team. James Olsen is Dr. Mark Hall, a surgeon who holds the key to stopping the nuclear bomb from detonating. Kate Reed as Dr. Ruth Levitt, a sassy microbiologist, and David Wayne as Dr. Charles Dutton, an older scientist and professor of pathology. So Jeff, you chose the Andromeda strain. What made you pick this movie? So this is a model for how to make a really good hard science fiction film. So hard SF films tend to be things, you know, that have much more of a grounding in real science as opposed to like soft SF or space opera. This film mashes up hard SF with a a procedural storyline in a way that is very compelling, very believable. The characters actually come across as professionals. The sets look completely functional. The terminology is accurate as, you know, as far as it's going to go about an alien organism. There's really not a lot wrong with this movie. It's just a great example of how you do a believable science fiction film. The movie I'd kind of compare it to for a a more modern audience would be like The Martian. The Martian is very similar in the sense of it's very scientifically grounded and you get the procedural aspects where you see each step of how in that film, you know, how Matt Damon survives on Mars. In this case, we see each step of how this team figures out what Andromeda is and what they need to do to try to stop it. Okay, well, let's jump into the plot. So what are some of the key points as a writer that you would like to call out about this plot? Well, one thing it ports over from the book, because I have read the book, is the very real-world, almost documentary feel. Everything in this movie feels like it actually exists. The base is very functional. As I said, the terminology all makes sense. None of the characters act in ways that are particularly movie-like. Even uh, the Mark Hall character at the end of the film kind of becomes briefly the action hero in that he has to rush through this base to try to stop the atomic bomb from going off. The way that's played is very low-key. The base has like these defense systems, uh, including a laser system. And by the time he finally stops things, everything's, he's like, messed up. He's like, what would happen if a surgeon was told, hey, you need to stop this bomb from going off before I'll get killed. All the stuff that takes place outside of an, outside the base where we see like this investigation into a town that is destroyed by Andromeda when the space probe first returns, that all feels very realistic. That all is presented in very believable real world fashion. A lot of the drama from this actually comes from two things, which is trying to uh, dive into the unknown how does Andromeda work and how do these people use science to try to figure that out? And then the unreliability of systems, which is also an important theme of this movie. So I think that's what I'd want to start with is that everything that sets up the world for this film is well crafted. So what did you think about like just the world building, just how things look and how the characters react? In terms of the characters and how they react is that, I mean, they were set up to be believable scientists, um, which you don't expect scientists to be Rambo, right? Like bulked up, like action hero types. The problem I had is that the characters, maybe they were very realistic, but I found all four of our primary scientist characters 
to be really boring. Like, I didn't get any interesting backstory on them. I didn't see a lot of tension between the four characters. There wasn't any growth arc, redemption arc. Like, it just... the Even, like, the sassy... I, I guess the most interesting character to me was um, Dr. Ruth Levitt, the sassy microbiologist, uh, just because she was fun. But... I didn't find the characters themselves to be that interesting. Uh, and so I, that's one of my big problems with this film is it's just maybe it was very realistic, but it was I found the film to be boring with boring characters, a slowly paced plot, lots of time spent looking at blinky lights and, you know, looking at stuff under a microscope and talking about the science. And it just wasn't paced fast enough for me but even if it was slowly play a deliberately slowly paced film if the characters have been more interesting maybe I could get into the harder sci-fi and all of their time spent looking you know at the organisms and talking about it but the characters just weren't interesting to me uh so let me pause there what are your thoughts about the four characters I was fine with them they came across as believable for the roles that they were playing I didn't find them boring. I would agree that this is not a traditional kind of character arc for any of them. There's not something where you have a character starting from point A and then goes through trauma and gets to point X, right? I would agree with that. But I don't think that would have fit in this movie. This movie really isn't about character growth or character development. This movie is much more of a plot-driven film. And that's one thing about this is that what really grabs me is the plot is interesting. So I guess that's the thing is because I didn't find the plot that interesting. I was looking for something to grab onto with the characters and I didn't find it there either. So when you you get, you got you have to have one of the two be interesting. Either the characters are super interesting or the plot's super interesting. And when you have neither, from my perspective, it makes for a movie that I just wish ended and I was like oh another scene of looking at blinky lights and in terms of the believability of like the setting I mean it's very 1970s in terms of like their idea of like a cool high-tech lab is lots of blinky lights um but that's fine because that's part of like you know what we're looking at in terms of the time but I thought the levels designated by colors was an interesting choice. I'm not sure it was entirely necessary to have a yellow level and a red level and a this and that, but I don't know. That was something I think that was, I suppose, meant to, so that they, they remember which level they're on underground. You can get disoriented underground, but I thought that was well, stylistically an interesting choice. <laughs> well, yeah, part of it, I think, was just set design, the idea of we want to differentiate for the audience, obviously, where they are. But also, that is that is a plot point where one of the characters mentions it, and, and I think it's the, um, uh, the, do the scientist in charge says, oh, well, these are colored because of these studies that we had and how color impacts people and their workability and things like that. And I guess there's something else about this film that I like is that even little things like that which normally you wouldn't even have to call attention to, right? You could easily just say, well, it's just so the audience knows where they are. This film does give a reason for everything that's happening, which goes back into, for me, that verisimilitude, how this movie feels so real. Yeah, I found the most interesting part of this movie took place when they're exploring the desert town, Piedmont, New Mexico, where the you know, the trying to figure out what happened and they're seeing all these dead people mysteriously and like t the powdered blood like all that I thought was really interesting but then everything in the lab just got for me very monotonous um I mean there's this one scene where they just analyze this capsule and rock and looking closely at the patches to see how they change it was so long and so boring I'm like oh my goodness can we just move this pace <laughs> faster um maybe i don't have the patience for a movie like this um i i think a particular person will like this film but i think a lot of people will find it really long and boring well i disagree with the a lot of people thing Mo uh, a lot of people actually find i mean this is a classic film for a reason this is a great movie i would say that some people could find elements with slowly paced 
Now, I would say it's deliberately paced. For example, that scene that's actually called out because there is um, a scene where uh, one of the characters is like, well, why don't we move into the exterior right now and start looking? And one of the other guys says, no, we're going to look at everything. We're going to do the exterior first because that's protocol. That gets into one of the themes of this about how, first thing, the kind of systems that go into science, but also the failings of those. Because you, to some degree, you're right. They're under this that um, ticking clock, right? That Andromeda is out. It's out in the wild and it's spreading. And they mm-hmm. need, they're the ones who need to find out how to stop this. But they're so also dedicated to these systems and how they work is that they're not going to do what you might assume and I might assume be the thing to do, which is immediately look at the uh, filter inside that's supposed to catch objects in orbit and which brought back this micrometeor with the organism on it. That's this theme that keeps coming up in this movie about how people are getting into these programmed routines about how they're supposed to do things. And that's actually shown as one of the weaknesses of uh, the response to Andromeda. And I think that maybe goes back into why these characters might seem a little, I don't want to say bland, but there's not a lot of, I guess, passion there, right? It's like they're very technical. They're like mm-hmm. technocrats. It is like watching what you'd assume a group of scientists was working a problem. But part of that is, I think, because we're supposed to take away from it that these people are so locked into the systems of how to look at the world around them and how to do their jobs that it's actually hindering them from being able to solve the problem. And it's not until they start to break out of those systems that they actually begin to kind of, again, figure out how to solve Andromeda. Yeah, I mean, to each their own, of course, but I would much, I much prefer like Jurassic Park. If you want to go with another Michael Crichton film where it's scientists trapped in a place together trying to solve a problem, scientists trapped on an island trying to deal with dinosaurs, there's a lot more action, it's a lot more interesting than trapped in this underground bunker trying to deal with the Andromeda strain, in my opinion. Um, I, yeah, I, I do think that, that maybe they, and, and that's the difference between film and documentary, right? I didn't go into this wanting to watch a documentary style observing how scientists would handle this in reality. I want to see a, a science fiction version of this on with film. And, and it might be that I'm just not that into hard sci-fi either. I, I much prefer the more fantastical action adventure sci-fi or more like deep thinking sci-fi with like looking at interesting stuff like time travel and all that but I think the hard science fiction is not my cup of tea in general so that could also be leading into why I didn't love this film well and I I can understand that and a lot of Michael Crichton's books at least are very hard sci-fi especially his earlier books and i think he got a bit more mass market as he went on like jurassic park is we, is a we bit would not more. consider hard sci-fi <laughs> the book is a bit more though but um the book also has more of, does have like the action movie pacing especially you know after the midpoint of the book right so with this film i, I can see that if you're looking for something more i guess actiony more uh with a faster pace you're looking for something more like contagion yeah, and, and you know, I think what it was is I saw Michael Crichton. This is a Michael Crichton film or adapted, um, and I thought Jurassic Park. I thought, you know, something like I was out, I was thinking something like that, right? And then I get this, and it's so different than what I went in expecting. Okay, well, I can see that, yes, if you were thinking action film, yeah, this is not, this is not an action film. It definitely isn't. I would just go back to what I was saying, though, is that particularly if you like hard science fiction this movie is a great example of how to do it did any of uh, his other hard sci-fi get adapted to film coma okay i haven't seen that let's see and then there are a couple of things that you know now he's also done um you know some i guess softer sci-fi or more mass i guess mass market sci-fi um Westworld, for example, is a Michael Crichton mm-hmm. film. Um, Looker, which is a fairly obscure Michael Crichton film with, from the uh, early 80s. Yeah, I, I really don't have any way to 
convince you that it's not slowly paced. I mean, it really, that's an interesting thing though. And this is when we talk about pacing, because a lot of our reviews, we at least bring that up about how a film is paced. There is that line between something that one person like me can find deliberately paced, where I look at something like the capsule examination sequence or the decontamination sequence where at the beginning of the film... Oh, that's long too. Right, but where our characters are shown going through all these steps so that they can eventually get to the lab level and you see each uh, phase of it. And we're told it takes, I think, like 18 hours to go through it. And, you know, obviously the film doesn't show all 18 hours, but we get a sense of each step. For me, that I think that's useful. I, I found that interesting. Versus I'm like, put that into a quick montage and let's move on. Right. So I guess that'd be an interesting question. Uh, I think it's interesting is where is that line? I mean, what is a film that you would see that had a more deliberate pace? And, w- and what dif- what differentiates deliberate and slow? I would say Swimming Pool is a good example of a well-done, deliberately paced movie. It's it do, Swimming Pool never felt slow to me. I felt that they were building up the tension as the story progressed, and it was well done. I think, to me, the difference is if it feels slow and I'm starting to watch the clock, it's not deliberately paced. If it's, if I'm still engaged in the movie, uh, but the one thing with swimming pool is that the characters were really interesting. And that's what I was going to ask. Do you find that pacing for you and that kind of dividing line has to do with your interest in the characters? Yeah. I would say for, if you're going to deliberately, or slowly pace out the plot, you need characters that I'm invested in. And that was the big problem I had with this one is I just, these four scientists, there was, I just didn't care about them. Whereas for me, the pacing worked because I was invested in the plot. I found the actions they were going through and how everything was building up. And especially that theme about the unreliability of systems, that was enough to keep me invested in it. So the, capsule examination sequence which does go on for a while i mean that's probably about five minutes i didn't time it but it sure felt pretty long i'm like oh they're but for me I, pushing more buttons but right but i looked at it, i'm like okay I, I for me it, that worked into what i saw as one of the themes of the film and the time itself i thought was just well spent kind of building that up and also just kind of getting a sense of how difficult it would be for these characters to do this work on this you know, alien organism and all that. But then again, the characters for me, I don't need to be that invested in them, I guess. If the plot is in a film, book, whatever, if the plot's good enough, I think that that actually can uh, make up for deficits in characterization. Just like a a thinly plotted story with great characters, well, you can be drawn into them and go, I like the characters. The, the plot might be a cliche, but I like the characters, so I like the story. The best story has both, where you have rich characters and an interesting, engaging, well-paced plot. And it's sometimes hard to get both together, but to me, that's uh, there's this whole idea of plot-driven versus character-driven. Mm-hmm. I think you can have a good blend of both. This had neither. But anyway, the reason I wanted to bring this up, though, is that this seems to be your primary uh, objection to this film. So it's not like the production aspects or anything like that. Production was fine for it's, it's, when it was filmed in the 70s. It's, it's just, it was boring. To right. Me. So you had that pacing issue, and that was primarily because you didn't find the characters that interesting. So all the stuff they were going through just didn't build up to anything that you found uh, warranted the investment of time to watch it. Mm-hmm. And I'm just saying that, you know, for the listener out there is that since I found the plot interesting, and if you're going to find this kind of plot interesting, you might not care that much that the characters don't have a particular arc. They're pretty much who they are at the beginning. They're the same people at the end because that fits in with the kind of plot, the kind of story that's being told. And don't go into this film expecting later Michael Crichton, Jurassic Park feel. Why? And I would, yes, I before we wrap this up, I would agree with that. As a, again, this is not an adventure film. This is not an action film. This is much more of a, as I said at the beginning, it's like this hard sci-fi slash procedural film. I okay. assume you have nothing else to say about no- the plot? Nothing else. Boring, boring, boring. Nor do I. 
amazing, amazing, amazing. So let's get into our wrap up. Steph, do you have a scene you liked in this movie? It was a stretch, but I would say the one that I liked the best was when they enter Wildfire Lab for the first time. There's a secret elevator that's hidden within this Department of Agriculture building in the middle of the desert. And it's always fun to see a rando secret elevator in the middle of nowhere that goes down to this elaborately constructed underground uh, lab. And they, as they were going down the elevator, we get to see animation uh, with a split screen of two doctors talking. I just thought that was an interesting stylistic choice and I thought it worked. Um, so we're like seeing the elevator go going down and the split screen. Um, so yeah, that would be my favorite. What about you? I actually like part of that, uh, but I actually think the entire first act is just really great. And I know we're supposed to do like the best scene, but I take it as one package, that initial exploration of the town where we, you know, see our two doctors in their uh, hazmat suits going around and exploring things. And then the entry into the wildfire lab and the whole decontamination procedure, all of that, I think just really, that really drew me into this world. And I wanted to see where the film was going to go at that point. What is your least like scene? And can you get this down to a single scene or is it just everything else? Well, I did get it down to a scene, um, and it's not going to be a surprise, but it's the analyzing the capsule rock scene. It's just long, boring, robotic arm grabbing the sample, scientists pushing buttons. It just went on and on and on looking at this thing under the microscope. Uh, I was just ready for that scene to be over, uh, and it just it felt really long. What about you? I actually found the action scene at the end where uh, Dr. Hall is climbing up this maintenance shaft in the center of the lab and the automated defense systems are trying to sh kill him with lasers and stuff. And there's a countdown for a nuke in the base to basement of the base to go off. And he has to disarm that. I actually didn't think that was all necessary. And it seemed like I, I'm pretty sure it's in the book, but it seemed almost like it was more like, okay, we need to end this on a bang when it seems a little tonally at odds with the rest of the movie, which is, again, very deliberate and very realistic and not very action-y. So I don't think you needed that, honestly. Okay, well, let's do our final panda rating. Okay, so from zero to five, alien pandemic pandas. Ooh, panda panda. What would you give the Andromeda strain? A one. This is a hard pass for me. Boring characters, boring plot. Uh, you know, there's lots of blinky lights and special effects that for their time, I suppose, were good. But it just was way too slowly paced. Uh, so you have been warned, unless you like very deliberately paced hard sci-fi, I'd skip this film. What about you, Job? So I gave this four pandas. I thought this is a great science fiction film. It's a really good example of a hard SF film. I think that it's very well paced. The only thing I will say, and you know, we talked about this, but I will say that the, if you are looking at this for characters, then you might be a bit disappointed just because the characters, there is really no development there. But other than that, this is a great movie. Go out and see it. The delta between our ratings is is. Pretty significant in this one. Three pandas difference. Uh, I know. It's rare that we're that far apart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I just wanted to call that out that, you know, we definitely have some differences of opinions, but this is, I don't know if we've been this far apart before in a film. I, I don't think we have. So. First time for everything. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, what do we have next week, Jeff? All right. So next week. We're going to be checking out Lion, currently on Amazon. Stream On is a production of Steph and Jeff Wright's Media. Reproduction without written consent is prohibited. All rights reserved, 2021.